Now to a trip back in time through the eyes of my esteemed colleague as we get to know you here at 4 p.m. Yesterday I took you back to my Evanston grade school and today it is Jim's turn. My formative years were spent in West Chatham, just west of the Dan Ryan Expressway, a neighborhood in the larger Chatham community. I made the stroll down memory lane with a childhood friend and neighbor who explains why we look back so fondly on our old neighborhood today. A lifetime of happiness. It is a cliche that Chicago's communities were once so close, people knew all of their neighbors. The Chambers, the Moors, the Paines. It sounds like an exaggeration, but here in West Chatham, in the 1960s, it was true. The Worshams. Oh my goodness. The Woods. Oh my goodness. The Phillips. Even decades later, April Mosley can recall all of her neighbors, our neighbors connected by a common conviction. You did not have to be related by blood to take care of every child here. The parents looked after us as if we were there. That's right. You know, um, you did something wrong, they gonna get you. <laughs> it was a village. It was a village. There you go. We grew up in a village. Yeah. And you don't see that anymore. April has been my friend for 60 years. She knew me, I'm on the right here with my brother, when I was a painfully shy kid, terrified to read out loud in front of the class. We were in the same grade here at Hookway Elementary School and lived across the street from each other. A time when even at five and six years old, children here could walk to school without an adult. We would walk throughout the neighborhood, never had a problem. It was 1962 when my parents, my father a Chicago police officer, my mother a special education teacher, bought this small house for $20,000. For black Chicagoans with limited housing options in a sharply segregated city, Chatham was our modest slice of the American dream. A place where parents of various income levels led youth sports and scout troops and the campfire girls. It is symbolic of um, people striving and making it and making it in their own terms. Nidra Sims Fears leads the Greater Chatham Initiative and lives here too. So all the things that made Chatham attractive back in the day is still attractive and people have come. Despite a loss of manufacturing jobs that's hurt Chatham's economy, even though more African Americans are living in the suburbs today, Chatham's residential streets mirror the pristine streets of my childhood. West Chatham Park, where I played Little League, is even nicer. Studio here. Nidra Sims Fears tells us Chatham is still a good investment. And it's been more attractive during the pandemic. You can buy a two unit um, um, condo in Bronzeville for $250,000 and you can buy a house in Chatham for $250,000. People got out of those small condos in Bronzeville and High Park um, and came and lived in Chatham. Oh wow. April Mosley and I both live elsewhere today, but we're grateful when we were children, a village was home. I think I was a, a lucky lady to be raised here in West Chatham. Marie, people ask me how I, a native Southsider, became a Cubs fan. <laughs> right. Well, Mr. Cub himself, Ernie Banks, lived in Chatham. Oh, okay. And we knew him. He was part of the community. He was accessible. Interesting. Jim, what a beautiful slice of your personal history. Thank you for sharing it. And I loved what you said. It is so important. The pandemic has only made it worse, right, that we are so separated right. from our neighbors, but it has such an impact. And if you've experienced, you know it. It made me want to make sure I instill that in my neighborhood, honestly. Listen, a short story. My father got very ill in 1967. He nearly died. Mm. Uh, he was rushed to the hospital, the University of Chicago's emergency room, by our next door neighbor, okay. who was a factory worker. Wow. A lot of love in that neighborhood for sure.